Hallelujah. Shalom. Good evening. I'm uh, Rabbi Vincent P. Adams, the Shilly Cop, and I'm co-founder of That's I Am, the Tree of Life, along with my lovely wife, Navia Leslie Adams. And we want to welcome you to our second annual revival. This year, which is the biblical year 5775, 2015 on the Gregorian calendar, we have uh, titled this year's revival, the Blood Moon Revival. Uh, this is the third blood moon coming up uh, in a few days, in really next week, next Friday, uh, will be the third blood moon in a sequence of fourth, which will uh, culminate on Sukkot. 5776 or Tabernacles 5776 will be the fourth and final blood moon in a, a sequence of four. Starting last year, we had a blood moon for Pesach last year and a blood moon for Tabernacles last year, and we're going to have a blood moon for Pesach and Sukkot and Tabernacles this year. A very rare event, uh, certainly has not happened in. Um, the past hundred years and probably won't happen if it does happen again for another hundred uh, uh, in the future. So tonight's teaching is entitled The Four Worlds and the Four Parts of Our Spirit. We've already on previous nights uh, gone over the Ten Sea for Road and the, and the 32 Paths of Wisdom as well as who is God. Uh, each night is somewhat cumulative. And if you haven't been following us on the past six nights, you might be a little lost tonight. Uh, but uh, unless you've had some previous teaching or from uh, some of my other teachings or from other ministries, but we can't go over everything again. Uh, every night we'll never get through so if you're watching live and you haven't seen the past night's teachings uh, continue to watch of course but go back and and, uh, and look at look at the past night's teachings and maybe watch this again take notes so that you will understand what's going on uh, these are very uh, revelatory teachings you will not find them being taught in most ministries, I guarantee you, and probably any ministry, to be sure. Uh, there, there will be something here that you have not heard someplace else, or at the very least, you didn't hear it all together, uh, put together. You know, the Word of God says that we learn line upon line precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. And so I've been doing that and putting this together, you know, line, you know, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, and bringing that together so that we can uh, discern God's will and way for our lives. So let me get to it here. may need a computer. I'm going to adjust the camera so that you have a, a clear view of the 10 C for rope. Give me a moment to adjust things here. Oh, that looks pretty good. Pretty much got it on the first shot. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Yep, there we go. Okay. 
It was working like a charm tonight. Boy, it was rough going last night. Okay. Okay. We have a clear picture of the 10C for Road here. And as I said, tonight's um, teaching is on the four worlds and the parts, the four parts or five parts of our spirit. So give me a moment here to pull up my notes. So I'll be able to, to move along. Okay. I'm going to kind of go over here on the side, put my notes down here and so I can point to things. Okay. You know, as I told you the other night, those of you who remember, Mount Hood down here at the bottom represents the earth realm, the natural world that we live in, the, the corporeal world of flesh and blood, time, space, and motion. Your everyday life, okay? The next six, Yasad, then Had, Nasak, Tiferet, Guvara and Hesed. The next six is called Zern and Pin. Zern and Pin. Then we have Bina, which is the Ruach HaKodesh, or the Holy Spirit. Hakma, Wisdom, which is Yeshua. And Keter, the crown, which is Father. The Holy Trinity. The Godhead, the Holy Trinity. The whole 10 Sephiroth is called the Tree of Life. As I already uh, explained on the first night that we began the revival. Now we want to talk about, you know, we talked about the, the 10 Sephiroth and the different meanings, the, th the, uh, the 32 paths of wisdom, together the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet or Aleph Beg plus the 10 C for all make up the 32 paths of wisdom. Okay? Now, there's another component to this that you need to be aware of. And as you keep hearing me say, the entire Bible, the entire Word of God is based on this structure that you see. Because this is the structure of the universe, both seen and unseen, as I demonstrated through the teachings already. I'm not going to go back over it. Okay? This represents you. It represents the solar system. It represents the spirit realm. Everything. This represents you all the way down to your atomic level, molecular level. This represents you emotionally. Everything about you and the, the known and un, un, the known universe and the unseen universe can be explained using this model. And I've already gone over that and proven that to you, and I'm going to give you more proof of that tonight by discussing the four worlds. Amen? Let's move forward. There are four worlds. According to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, let me make sure of that. I'm going to walk in front of the camera. I believe I quoted you the right scripture. Let's see, did I write it down? Maybe I don't have to go to the computer. Excuse me, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2. According to Hebrews 1, verse 2, let me just double check myself. I'm pretty sure that's it. Okay. Let me read that to you. 
beginning from verse 1. God, who at some, I'm reading out of King James Version, God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Verse 2, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Now take note in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 2 that the word world is plural. It is saying that Yeshua created the worlds, not the world, but the W-O-R-L-D-S. So there, are more, there is more than one world created by Yeshua. And I'm going to present to you tonight proof that there are indeed four worlds created by Yeshua, that he created four worlds. Okay, now this scripture here in Hebrews 1-2 is proof that he created more than one world. Well, how many worlds did he create? He created four. Go to Isaiah chapter 47, verse 3. Isaiah 47, verse Excuse me, Isaiah 47, verse 3. Okay, now we can actually probably... Let's Looks like I've got the wrong scripture there for Isaac. One second. Excuse me, I had Isaiah 43, verse 7. Sorry about that. I wrote the wrong thing down in my notes. Isaiah 43 and 7. Now, not only did Yeshua create four worlds, there is also a four-step process of creation. The reason why there, he created four worlds is because we were created, or the universe, both seen and unseen, was created in a four-step process. So creation itself has a four-step process in four different worlds. Now let me show that to you here in Isaiah 43 and 7 and the names of each world. Everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him. And I have made him. Now, I'm very redundant. I run on, you know, that's one of my, you know, both my good point and bad point as a teacher. You know, I, I can probably bore you to death by running on and on and on over and over again on the same thing. But at the same time, you can't say that you didn't get it when you study with me. I make sure that you hear it more than once and from a variety of different angles and positions. I'm redundant, <laughs> okay? God is not redundant. God is intensely purposeful. He is not redundant. Here in verse 7 of chapter 43 of Isaiah, God says, I called him by name. I created him, I formed him, 
and I made him. Now, how many times does he have to let us know that he's the creator? You see here, when he says called, that refers to the world of emanation, the world of absolute. When he says created, that's the world here, the world of absolute is contained in the Sephirah of Hatma. Okay. The world of Bria is the world of creation. All right. Now next, in seven, he says, I form him, Yitzhak. The world of formation is contained in what we call Zern and Pin. These six Sephiroth. Okay? The world where he, he called them, or the world of emanation, excuse me, absolute. The world of emanation. The world of creation. When we look at the Hebrew behind the words, that's where we get the words from. Then we have Yitzhak, the world of formation. Okay? Now the fourth and final world. It says, Yea, I made him. Asiyah. The world of Asiyah is Malhut, contained in the Sephirah of Malhut. The physical, corporeal world that we, that we live and move and breathe in every day. The world of Asiya, or the world of action. You know, we move. You know, world of action. World of formation. World of creation. We call or we're emanated, you know, in the mind of God. We're called in the world of Asilut from the mind of God or from Ain Sof. You can almost say that there are five, according to rabbinical uh, tradition, they say that there is five worlds, the fifth being Ain Sof, uh, which is the endless, infinite mind of the Father. Okay. Hakma as I told you before, is Yeshua on the right hand of the Father, right hand. Benai is the Ruach HaKadosh. Keter is Yahweh the Father, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Yeah, we were, we were create, we were emanated from the mind of the Father. Yahweh thought of us. Yeshua spoke, spoke us into being. Remember, Yeshua is the Word. He's the Word of God. So, called or absolute, emanate, the world of emanation, emanating from the mind of Yahweh and emanating from the mouth of Yeshua, created by the power of the Ruach HaKadosh, formed in Zerna and Pen, and then finally we became a living being here in Man in Malhut. Moving action. Those are the four worlds. Asiyah, the world of action, Yitzhara, the world of formation, Bria, the world of creation, Asilut, the world of emanation. Now let's go to Genesis chapter 1. Let me show you this four-step pattern, this four-phase pattern 
in creation. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Okay. Theologians have argued or debated that there is a contradiction in Scripture because Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 makes a statement, and then there is another statement made in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. The reason for the confusion is because Christian theologians do not understand, accept, or even know about the rabbinical doctrine of the four worlds. I just proved to you through Hebrews chapter 1 verse 2 that Yeshua created more than one world. Then we went to a proof text, Isaiah 43 verse 7, and we saw what those four worlds were. And we saw the four-step process of creation. Well, Yahweh himself says, I called, I, I made, I formed. Um, let, let me go back. Let, let me just use those English words. There. I'm going to go right, right back to Isaiah 43. Verse 7. You got it? Yeah. Everyone that is called, he said, I called him. That's the world of emanation. Then he said, I created. That's the world of Ria. Okay? And then he says, I formed. The world of Yitzhak, or oral formation. And then he said, I made. And that's the world of Asiya, the world of action. So called. Let me see if I can remember this. Called, 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 created, formed, and made. Called. What's that now? CCFM. Okay. Try to remember, try to remember CCFM. CCFM. Called, created, formed, and made. And if we look at the Hebrew words, they are Asiyah, Yetzirah, Briah, and Asilu. Actually, call is, is not Asilu, but that's what it implies, the world of emanation, according to uh, rabbinical doctrine. But you can see that there's a four-step process. If you want to debate with me about that word call, what it means in Hebrew is actually kwala, kwala. It means to call or call out, okay? It doesn't mean asilu, but according to rabbinical doctrine, that world is called the world of emanation because it's implied. We know that uh, even Christian doctrine teaches that we were in the mind of the Father uh, before we were spoken into creation by the Son, Yeshua HaMashiach. So it's implied. So it's still a four-step process we see here. A four-step process. Called, created, made, cc, what was it? Okay. CC, Call, call created for CCFM. It's a four step process. Four step, uh, four step process. Call created, formed, and made. The other, the other, the other three is Bria, Yitzhara, and Atsilu. I'm not, and Asiya. Okay, the world, the world of action. A four step process. We were created in four world, in four different worlds in a four-step process. Now, going back to Genesis. Right, I love it. Going back to Genesis, we just backtracked for a little clarity. If you, if you can see the same order in Genesis, what? You had a call first before 
I know, Leslie. I, I know. You've seen the same steps. Do you want to let me teach it? Okay. Okay, let me teach you before you ask the question. Okay. Okay, you got excited. You, you, I took so long to get here. Everybody now knows what I was going to say. It says, verse 20 says, And God said, called again. We see it here again. God said, spoke. Let us make, you know, asiyah. Okay? Let us make man in our own image after our own likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So here we see two steps. We see the first two steps. And God said or called, okay, and make. We see, we see the call and we see make. Okay, now let's go down to Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed, we see form, Yitzhak. The Hebrew word there is Yitzhak. Okay, the Hebrew word up in um, chapter 26 for make is Asiyah. Okay, Asiyah, the world of action. But now we see form, Yitzirah. And then finally, and it, it says, and God breathed the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So we see the four step process in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. We see two steps in each of those verses for a four-step process. This, these are these scriptures. Isaiah 43, verse 7, primarily. And really, uh, the Genesis account here, 26, is my own revelation. Uh, these are the basis for the rabbinical doctrine that there are four worlds, or at least four steps to creation. We, we further uh, took this a, a step further by going into the brick cut of shower, the New Testament, at Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2, where it said, it states that Yeshua created worlds, plural, not singular. So we know for surety that more than one world was created. Isaiah 43, verse 7, tells us what those four worlds are, or at least what the four phases of creation are. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, and chapter 2, verse 7, also gives us the four worlds or the four-step creational process of the four worlds. Now, now that we've laid down that uh, the biblical basis for this doctrine, let's put some meat on this. What does this mean? Okay. Since we are created in God's image, And as I told you when we went over to Tennessee for rock, this is also called the body of Yeshua, the tree of life, and it's called the body of Yeshua. We're created in this image. Not only does this reflect our bodies, as I'll get into tonight and show this to you again, it also reflects our spirit or our soulless realm. I prefer to say spirit than soul. Or soul. To me, soul means spirit. I'd rather say body or flesh when I'm talking about our corporeal human bodies. And when I say soul, I mean spirit. I don't mean the will, the mind, and the emotions as a lot of other teachers teach. Soul is spirit in my book. 
the body is the body. Uh, the mind, the will, and the emotions are contained in the brain. You know, so that's the body. But this also reflects the four or five parts of our spirit. Remember, we have the world of action, Asiyah, the world of formation, Yitzhak, the world of creation, Bina, or Bria, 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 the world of absolute or emanation. And then we have Ain Sof, sort of a fifth world, you know, the endless and infinite mind of Yeshua, a pseudo fifth world. Okay, now, there are, according to rabbinical doctrine, four parts or five parts of our spirit. Okay, the first part is called nephesh, the nephesh, and that refers to our flesh, our physical flesh. Whenever, I shouldn't say, well, you'll see the connection. It is spirit, so it is not what I mean by it refers to. Let, let me explain. Whenever we move or do something in this world, in Malhut, it is com it's coming from that part of our soul or that part of our spirit called the nephesh. Whenever we do something corporeal, it is coming from that part of our spirit called nephesh. When we take action, when we do something, if we do a mitzvah, a good deed, it's coming from the nephesh, part of our spirit. The next world, the world of formation, the world of Yitzhak, coincides with the part of our spirit called the Neshima, the Neshima. Whenever we speak, whenever we speak, it is coming from that part of our spirit called the Neshima. Words in this world are extremely important. This is the world of formation. This is where things are formed before they come into our world, Malhut. Remember, we think we, we think and speak things into being. Everything from a glass, a cup, and a saucer to the highest skyscrapers in the world existed in the world of formation before they existed, actually came into being here in the world of Malhut. They were first spoken here. Then they manifested here. There's a saying, as above, so below. So below, so above. And it's a good cycle. If you speak, if you continually speak things, make good confession, uh, confessions, it will be formed here. If you think the right things, it'll be formed here. And pretty soon, you'll see it here. If you don't say it, if you don't think it, it'll never get here. It's formed here. Sometimes the Lord will put something here and then put it in your mind so that you can speak it here so that you can bring it into existence in our dreams. That's where God will put certain ideas and thoughts. We think it's our idea, but it's actually God's idea. He's already placed it here for you. He just wants you to get it on your mind so that you can speak it into existence. So that you can bring it out of the world of formation or out of your thoughts, out of the world of formation into the world of malhood or into this physical corporeal world. It has to be 
created by the power of the Ruach HaKodesh. This is the power. Remember in Genesis chapter 1, it said, you know, we get a glimpse of the four-step process in Genesis chapter 1. I mean, in Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse 1 and verse 2. Chapter 1, verse 1 says, God created the heavens and the earth. Then in verse 2, it says, and God's spirit moved upon the face of the waters. And then that's when you begin to see life take, you know, when things really begin to happen. God first thinks it and speaks it. Then the Ruach has to come along and put the power to it. Give it some juice. Amen? Amen. Okay. Remember, words are extremely important in the, word of, in the world of formation. You form things with your words and thoughts. So words, as we will see as we move through this, are very, very important. Again, nephesh, when we actually do some, that's the part of our spirit, the lowest part of our spirit. Neshima, when we speak, the neshima part of our spirit is being activated. Then we have what's called, let me find it here. Read you the definition. Bear with me a second. The enemy really doesn't want to get this out. He doesn't want me to get it out. Okay, just as I thought, I just didn't trust myself to say it. The Ruach. This is the third phase uh, the, in the, the third world, the world of Bria. This is when we are thinking, when we are, uh, say, an architect who is, you know, Designing a building or a struck or an engineer designing a bit a bridge or some other structure. This, this is when our intellect is coming in into play. The left, the left part of our brain is really being activated here. That's coming out, you know, when we're doing mathematics, engineering, architecture, uh, carpentry, uh, putting something together, you know, using our mind, you know, thinking concentrating, focusing, that is coming out of our, the Ruach part of our spirit, which is coming from the world of Bria, or the Sephirah of Bina, which is the Holy Spirit. Okay? That's the third world. Now, in the fourth world, the world of Asilut, this is a part of our brain called the Kaya. Not our brain, but our spirit called the Kaya. Kaya. This is being at, this is more right part of our brain. This is when we have intuition. When we get maybe, aha, a bright idea. All of a sudden, something pops into our mind, or maybe we've been. Um, trying to solve a, a, a problem or trying to get clarity on a difficult situation or circumstance that we're fa facing and all of a sudden we have instant clarity about what to do. That's coming from the fourth part of our spirit called the Kaya and that's coming from the Sifara of Hakma or wisdom from Yeshua. Like I said, it's, it, it's intuitive. You know, it's more of a right brain function, whereas this is a left brain function. Remember, this is the right hand side. This is the left hand side. You know, of course, we, we have the center. So that's the fourth part of our spirit or soul. 
The fifth part of our spirit is called the Yekida. The Yekida. Still coming from absolute, but a little higher plane from the endless and the infinite. This is when, you know, this can is accessed also from meditation. This is from deep meditation. Deep meditation. When you're speaking in tongues and you're slain in the spirit and you receive something in your spirit, man, when you're, when you're laid out on the floor and when you've been slain in the spirit, slain in the Holy Ghost. Deep meditation from, you know, woo, deep with, you know, deep into the spirit realm. The yakida from that part. This is meditation or light, med you know, uh, a quick flash of insight, a knowing. This is deep, deep meditation. The yakida, the fifth part of our spirit. Now, what I wanted to say about that with the four parts of the spirit, they tend to correspond with the, the five centers of our brain. You know, we have a center of our brain that controls motor skills, movement. We have the frontal cortex, right hemisphere and left hemisphere. White hemisphere is the creative process. Those people who are artistic and creative, musical, those who write plays and movies and scripts and poetry and novels, right brain, you know, who can draw, who are artists. Then we have left brain people like myself, linear thinkers, mathematics, science, logic, you know, so right and left hemisphere, um, motor area of the brain. Then that part of the brain where they can, you know, memory, probably the world of formation, memory are being housed and sorted and processed. So it's, it's like there is, um, and then, you know, there's a deeper thing for the creative side also on the um, on, in the right hemisphere so each of these five parts of the soul tend to correspond with certain areas of our brain and that that tends to make sense if, if we study um, the brain we'll, we'll see the correlation between the five parts of the uh, of the spirit and then we see the correlation between the four worlds or the fifth world being Ainsoft, the you know the, the endless and infinite mind of the creator so this is you know become some very basic revelatory information that can be used to understand scripture uh, and get more revelation out of scripture now I want to uh, really put some meat on this now for you. If I may, I'm going to have to, I thought I had pulled my notes out, but one moment. Well. I did pull my notes out. Now I can't seem to find my notes. I have never had this much trouble trying to get a message out. <laughs> oh, there it is. I've already had it. Okay. Can't blame the devil on that one. That, that one's just me. Okay. Now, let's... Um, take a look well before we do that I just told you about the four worlds in rabbinical doctrine there are four levels of interpretation revelation or understanding
The first is called Peshat, which is the simple understanding, the simple straightforward reading of scripture. Next is called the Remez, and that refers to the world of formation, which means the hint, okay? The Peshat refers to the world of action, the simple interpretation. The Remez refers to hint and the world of formation. And then there's the drosh, which means search. Remember, the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. There's drosh, peshat, remez, and drosh. Those things that you have to search out through Scripture. And then there's the sod, the hidden things of Scripture. Those things that you have to get by the Spirit of God. You have to get revelation on. You're not going to just read it and be able to, uh, okay, exegete the scripture. Okay, you know, we break this scripture down. This one corresponds to that. That's the, you know, the search. When you exegete scripture. And the Ruach is leading you. But then there are those things that are just revelatory. It's, you, you don't know where it came from. You don't know how you know the meaning. The hidden things of Scripture that can only be revealed probably through meditation. Okay? So even the four rabbinical doctrines of interpretation and understanding of Scripture correspond to the four worlds okay now let's look at oh let me make up my mind here what we should take a look at first Okay, let's take a look at the Mishkan. The Mishkan is the tabernacle in the wilderness, the tabernacle of Moses. Remember the tabernacle in the wilderness? You had the outer wall, you know, the different skins of animals. Okay, and then there was, say, say Keter and Da'at are like a, a building. And inside that building was a division. Right here was the inner, called the inner court or the court of the priests. Then you had the curtains and the Holy of Holies that only the high priest could go into on Yom Kippur one day out of the year. Then outside the building, was a big open courtyard, and that was called the Court of Israel, open courtyard. And in that courtyard was the altar where the animals were sacrificed, okay? When you came in through the gates from outside, that signified coming in, coming uh, you know, from the outside world was Malhut. When you come into the gate, you will step in to the court of Israel or the world of formation, Yitzhak. Remember where words were very important. That's where you would dedicate your lamb, your bullock, your turtle doves or whatever you were sacrificing. And the priest would pray over it and then, you know, slit the animal's throat. The world of formation. Then, you you know, the priest or the Levites could go into the inner court or the court of the priest, which was inside of the covered building. Okay? And, you know, there you're 
entering into the world of creation. And then finally, you would go, the, the high priest could go into the Holy of Holies on Tishri 10, on Yom Kippur, into the Holy of Holies, into the world of Absolute. The world of Absolute, the world of uh, Bria, the world of formation, and then the outside world, the world of Mahud, outside the, the gates there. So all of scripture, I'm going to show you that all of scripture is based on the Tensi Farol and the four worlds. I've just shown you how your spirit is based on it. Okay? As well as your brain, really, also on the four worlds or the four four or five separations. Now we've looked at the, the Mishkan, the tabernacle in the wilderness. It's also based on the four worlds. When you come in, when you came in, you were doing a prophetic act so that you could ascend upward. Everything that was done in the Mishkan or the, the tabernacle in the wilderness was patterned after what Moshe saw in heaven when he was on the mount. Remember scripture told, you know, in the Bible, God said, remember that you do everything after the pattern I showed you. Everything that was done in the tabernacle in the wilderness was a direct correlation and reflection of what was being done in the temple in, in heaven. So, when you see me wash my hands and feet here at our altar, when you see me burn incense, when you see me light the candles, and you know we, we have praise and worship first, I'm recounting the steps of the Levites in the Mishkan, in the tabernacle of the wilderness, and later on the holy temples, the two holy temples that were built in Jerusalem. And when you do that, you make a direct connection with heaven to bring heaven down to earth, or at the very least, you extend up into heaven. You quantum leap, so to speak, into heaven. Science has said that there are 10 dimensions. We have 10 C for all. I don't know how they came up with that, but they believe now that there are 10 dimensions or 10 worlds total with the physical corporeal world that we live in, that there are nine of us other than where we live and move and have our being. So science is catching up with the Bible. Okay? Now, you remember, you may not, in Revelations chapter 4, there is uh, the phrase, the four living creatures that Ezekiel saw. Remember, Ezekiel saw the wheel. He saw uh, the chariots, the holy chariots, and he saw four beasts. One had the, the head of a man, one had the head of an eagle, another had the head of a lion or the face of a lion, and then the fourth one had the face of an ox. Four. Even those four living creatures, as they're called, or the four beasts, are a reflection of the four worlds. The ox... Remember, an ox is a strong, enduring animal. An ox is strong. It endures. I mean, it's not going to go anywhere fast. But where it goes, it goes there strong. It can pull a load. You, can, you know, you can plow a field. An ox is a servant. So the ox refers to the world of action. Service. The world of action. Enduring, 
not fast, but strong and enduring and service. That's what an ox does. Okay? Um, according to some uh, rabbinical teaching, the, the eagle is, I might as well read it, I'll read it. The four living creatures of Ezekiel 1 and the book of Revelation are symbols of the four worlds. The human form is Adam Kadmah the fiery and divine domain of emanation. So it's saying that the man is from the world of emanation. Now one thing I'm going to stop and back just for a moment. Remember we existed first in the mind of the Father. Perfect. As we existed in the mind of the Father before the fall, we we're perfect. We have no flaws. In rabbinical teaching, that is called Adam Kadman. That's Adam before the fall. He still exists in the mind of the Father. And he, he, it, it is he that is co-seated with Yeshua at the right hand of the Father. He's still there, Adam Kadman. He is still there. When people are talking about quantum jumping to access the um, their perfect self or their future self, what they're really doing is that accessing Adam Kadman. Okay, so that living creature that had the face of the man represents the world of absolute, okay, the world of emanation. And the ego, the airy level, the, the airy level of cosmic creation, the world of Bria, okay. And then the lion is the level of heart or formation. The world of Yitzhak, and I've already told you what the bull is. Now, this particular offer that I'm reading from, uh, the book is called The Middle Pillar by James Scott Trim. The quote that I just gave you is from Kabbalah, Tradition of Hidden Knowledge, page 71. Now, James Scott Trim suggests a different order. The ox or the bull is still here in Malhut, but the eagle is in the world of As represents the world of Absolute, and the lion, the world of Bria, and the man, the world of formation. Because of the doctrine of Adam Kadman, I believe that the man does re is representative of Absolute. The ego which generally is associated with knowledge or the gift of prophecy, I think does go better here. The lion is where we kind of, you know, the world of formation, how do we go? But the lion is king. And what happens here determines what happens here. So I, I tend to agree with... Um, the, uh, the offer of, of Kabbalah, Tradition of Hidden Knowledge, okay, that was written by uh, Zev Ben Shimon Halivi. You know, Zev, the son of Shimon the Levi. The face of the man is Adam Kadman in the world of Asilu. The ego is representative of the world of Bina, because the ego represents prophecy, which comes from Bina, and the line, which is lordship or rulership, is the is formation, because it is formation that really rules over Malhut directly, and then very easy, 
the ox is male hood. No, no dis discrepancy there. Okay. So I, I prefer uh, Halivi or Zev for that than James Scott Trim. Although uh, I agree with a lot of what uh, James Scott Trim, Rabbi James Scott Trim, uh, says in his book, uh, The Middle Pillar. So there we see a representation of the four living creatures based on or corresponding to the four worlds. We also, as I showed you, the four levels of interpretation of the word corresponds to the four worlds. Also, the four gospels correspond to the four worlds. Now, I'm going to quote to you what um, Rabbi James Scott Trim says about, about that. The, the book of John, he associates with the world of absolute. Remember, this is the hidden meaning. I agree with that. The world of Bria, he associates with the book of Matthew. Matthew. And the book of Luke, he associates with the world of formation. He says the book of John portrays um, Yeshua as Messiah. The book of Matthew portrays him as the king. And the book of Luke portrays him as the son of man. And the book of Mark portrays him as the servant. So the book of Mark as a servant with the ox will correspond with the world of Asiyah. Uh, the Son of Man, the book of Luke, will correspond with the world of formation. And the book of Matthew, again, with Bria, with the Yeshua as king. And the book of John portrays him as the word, which does match up, in my opinion, with Hakma. Because Yeshua, Hakma is Yeshua, and Yeshua is the Word. So I would agree. I agree with him on on the lining up there. John, the Word, and the other line. But I have not reread the Gospels with that thought in mind. I need, you know, I need to reread, and you also need to reread the Gospels and see what the Holy Spirit says to you as to where each gospel would line up with the four worlds. We really can't be uh, dogmatic about it. I'm taking someone else's word, but if I read the gospels myself, would I, you know, does John, well, I understand why he says John is the word, because in John 1, verse 1, it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word's with God, and the word was God. Okay? Um, so naturally you would want to put Luke in the world of absolute at Hakma. That, that does make a lot of sense, but on, you know, but is the book of Mark really describing Yeshua as a servant? Does the book of Luke really describe him as the son of man more? Does Matthew really talk about him as Messiah? All of those could be matters of opinion. All of it could be matter of opinion. So we need to uh, to read that, reread the Gospels with this lesson that I'm going over with you tonight in mind. Okay? So we see how the four worlds, are, you know, are very important to the understanding of Scripture. Now let me show you... Uh, something else. Galatians chapter 5 
verse 22. talks about the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit correspond with the tendency for all. Okay? Remember this. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, faith, and an enduring spirit. Now, I just listed eight fruits of the Spirit and only eight. In the original language, the original manuscript only has eight fruits of the Spirit. The King James Version has nine. What I suspect happened there, a margin note drifted into from the translator drifted into the text. Because the original Hebrew and Aramaic only give eight fruits of the Spirit. And they really match up better than those nine given in the King James. Let me show you. Uh, the fruit of love. Hesed. Mercy. Love. Goodness. Guvara. All Remember, Guvara is judgment. Remember, all the Bible says all of God's judgments and decrees are good. So the fruit of goodness comes with the sephira of guvara. Love, of course, with hesed, mercy. Tiferet reflects faith. Remember, faith is central to everything. Tiferet is here in, in the center. It is the only sephira that is connected to all the other sephiroths. Sephiroths, excuse me. So, faith is central. Nothing works without faith. Central. Remember, this represents the sun in our solar system. The sun is central. You can't make this up. Okay? Nessa, joy. When you get to victory, what do you have? Joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Netzach, victory. Okay? Gentleness, for ha, splendor, majesty. It said, uh, uh, Father Aaron walked barefoot on the floor of the temple, making, you know, offering prayers and praises and supplications for, for Israel. Aaron was a gentle person. Okay? So gentleness goes with ha. All right. Peace goes with your side. Remember, peace is wholeness. All of the blessings of the eight sephira are contained in your side so that it can penetrate into malhood and bring those into mal So peace or wholeness is your side. Then an enduring spirit, malhut, easy. What do you need here in the earth realm? You need an enduring spirit. What animal is, goes with this world? The ox. The ox is very enduring. A servant, very enduring. So as we see that the fruit of the spirit corresponds with the Sephira. Okay? Excuse me, with the sevens, I, you know, I counted wrong, seven. The lower seven. The fruit of the Spirit correspond with the lower seven. Sephira, and that makes sense because they would be in the lower world so that they could penetrate into the earth realm. I think I said normally, uh, did, did I say there are eight, eight fruit? So uh, in the original language, there are seven. So there are eight 
I believe in the um, King James King James love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, and faith, meekness, temperance. No, there were nine. There, the King James Version has two extra fruit of the Spirit. The original Hebrew or Aramaic manuscript, manuscript only has seven. If there were nine, it would really throw this off. It wouldn't make sense. Where would you put them? The seven makes perfect sense. Nine doesn't. That's proof that the original manuscript of the of the brick cutter shop was written in Hebrew and in Aramaic. Now let's uh, let's take a look at the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit. I believe what is that? First Corinthians chapter twelve for the gifts of the Spirit. Let me just double check. The enemy is working hard against my memory tonight. So let's make sure I'm giving you the white scriptural reference here. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I was right. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse verses 1, I think all the way down to 27. Now, let's look at the gifts of the Spirit. How does that match with the ten Sephiroth and the four worlds? Word of wisdom, Hakma. Word of knowledge. Da, spiritual discernment, Bina. Word of wisdom, Hakma, Yeshua is wisdom. Da is knowledge, word of knowledge, spiritual discernment. Remember, the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. Discernment, spiritual discernment, perfect. Okay, faith, Tiferet. Faith is central to all. Gifts of healing, hesed, mercy. Remember, astronomically, hesed represents the planet Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system. Remember, hesed keeps the asteroids and space debris from colliding into Earth and destroying it. It's the mercy planet. So heal, you know, healing is an act of mercy. So a gift of healing corresponds to the Sephira of Hesed. Gift of miracles. Gufara. This is the power and the might. Miracles, power, might. Tongues. Nesak. Okay? Interpretation of tongues. Ha. Prophecy. Yesa. When you have, remember I told you that words are extremely important here in the world of Yitzhak formation. When you get a tongue and you get an interpretation of that tongue, that tongue then becomes a prophecy. You see that? You get a tongue, you get the interpretation of that tongue, it now becomes a prophecy. So the gift of tongues, the sock, remember, the or, let me just give you the order of the tendency for all. This is the highest, next highest, next highest, next, 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 here, finally here. So first you would get a tongue. You can't get an interpretation of a tongue until you get a tongue. So you would get a tongue here at Nesach. Then you would get the interpretation. Then you have a prophecy. Amen? Very easy. So as you can, you can see, we have one, two, three, 
456789. That's probably why the the translator tried to he whoever it was, he wanted to have nine fruits of the spirit and nine gifts of the spirit because he didn't understand the four worlds and the ten sephirah and what was going on. It doesn't make any sense to have nine fruits of the Spirit. It makes sense to have nine gifts of the Spirit, but not nine fruit. The nine gifts refer to the upper world, come from the upper worlds. The seven fruits are the seven Lord. Okay, now, let me show you again how important words are in the world of formation. I'm sure you can see how the gifts line up with the tendency for all. You know, it, it would be very difficult, as I said earlier, go back and watch my previous teachings from this week, and you will see that I'm building quite a case for belief in the Bible and quite a case for belief in this doctrine. You, like, like I just keep saying, you, you can't make this stuff up. You have to, you know, the only conspiracy theory that I, that I can think of that will work in this situation is that aliens planted us here, wrote the Bible for us, and, um, you know, gave us all of this doctrine to follow. Because in order to do this, you would have to have knowledge of the solar system which early man, during the time that this was written, didn't have, had no clue of. I've already stated that, so we don't have to keep go going over it. Now, in Colossians 3.10, it tells us to put on the newness that is renewed by the knowledge and the likeness of our Creator. And in 1 Corinthians 15.14, it says, And like we have worn the likeness of the one who was from the dust, me and Adam, thus we will wear the likeness of the one who is from heaven, which is Yeshua, which is Adam Kadma. We put on the likeness of God when we put on the full armor of God. When we wear the clothes that Adam Kadma wears, then we're putting on the likeness. Remember, we're created in God's image. The way that we put on or adapt ourselves and become the likeness of our Creator is by wearing the clothes that Adam Kadman wears. Adam Kadman is co seated with Yeshua at the right hand of the Father, but he exists throughout all of the tenth sephirah in all the four worlds. Now people who say that they are quantum jumping, they go to one dimension and they find, you know, the artistic, uh, their artistic self. Another dimension, they find their technical self and so forth and so on. So that, that corresponds with the doctrine of Adam Kadma, because he exists in all, you know, throughout this entire structure. Remember, this is the body of Yeshua, the actual body of Yeshua. And if we're made in God's image, this resembles our body. Let's go to the scripture where it says to put on the full armor 
of God. So let's let's look at the look at the armor. Someone want to find that scripture for me? I think it's Ephesians six eleven. Let me double check that. Okay. Okay. Is it, is it Ephesians six eleven? Hold on, I'll go in just a sec here. Ephesians 6. Yeah. Ephesians 6, 11 says, put on the whole armor of God. When we, when we obey Ephesians 6, 11 and put on the armor of God, we're, putting, we're wearing the clothes that Adam Kadman wears. And we're transforming ourselves into the likeness of our creator yeshua by doing so now how does the armor of god correspond with the ten c for all and the four worlds let me show you the helmet of salvation remember keter represents our skull hakma is our right brain bina is our left brain so we put on the helmet of salvation that covers Keter, Hakma, and Bina, the world of Asalut and the world of Bria is covered by the helmet of salvation. Okay? Hesed is our right arm. Guvara is our left arm. Tiferet is our torso, front and back. When we put on the breastplate of righteousness, that covers Tiferet, the breastplate of righteousness. All right? So now we have our helmet on, which covers Keta, Hakma, and Bina, because Hakma is the right brain, Bina is the left, and Keta is the skull, containing and holding both in one, triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in one, one head, the Godhead, okay, the Godhead, in the helmet of salvation, we put on the breastplate of righteousness, which is Tiferet, remember Tiferet is our torso, our body front and back, next we put on the belt of truth, what do we have here, like a belt? The belt of truth. Have our loins girded. Loins, remember you saw it, represents our sexual organs. We have our loins girded about with the belt of truth. Nexat, Yasad, and Ha. Yasad, according to rabbinical doctrine, is said to represent the spiritual emanation of Emet, or truth. Truth is our foundation. Truth. So the belt of truth covers Yisad, Netzah, and Ha. We put the belt of truth. And then we have our feet, which is represented by Malhut, shod with the preparation of the gospel of good news so that we can endure what the enemy is doing to us down here. Okay, we need the gospel of good news. So, the armor of God covers the entire Sephirah or the body. Now remember, Hesed is our right arm. Guvara is our left arm. The Bible also says, take the shield of faith. Okay, the shield. What is Hesed? What's the planet that represents Hesed? Jupiter. What does Jupiter do? It shields us. It has mercy on us. So we take the shield of faith in our left, excuse me, in our right arm. Now normally we right-handed people, we want to have our shield in our left hand and our sword in our right hand to strike with power. But in the case of Adam Kadman, 
the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, which judges us. The word of God judges us, does it not? The sword of the spirit. Remember, B9 is the, the spirit. The Ruach HaKodesh, that's why it goes on the left. We take the sword of the spirit, which is, you know, the judgment. And it's in the left hand. And the reason why it's left is because since most of us are right-handed, our left-handed is weaker. Remember, in your weakness, God is strong. That's why when we put on tefillin, I wrap the seven straps around my left arm, not my right, so that God can be strong in my weakness. So now Adam Kadman has on the full armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, the belt of truth, and feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of the good news. Throughout all the ten Sephiroth, Throughout all the four worlds, Adam Katma exists in all ten Sephiroth throughout all of the four worlds. The fruit of the Spirit corresponding with the lower seven. The gifts of the Spirit corresponding with the upper nine and the four worlds. We determine where each one goes by what? The definition of, of, the, of the Sephirah and which world it exists in. Help us to do the placement. So the doctrine of the four worlds is very important in understanding scripture and the gifts and fruit of the spirit and adapting ourselves, transforming ourselves, renewing our minds so that we take on the likeness of our Creator. Now you're going to have to listen to this again and sort it out for yourself. I'm not uh, trying to be real definitive here. I'm this is an introduction. These uh, lessons during the 12, first 12 days of Nisan are meant to introduce you to the doctrines of the Tree of Life or SIM and our ministry and what we do here, why we do it, and how we do it. Okay? Now we just put a lot of meat on the 10 C for Rod here. You know, we kind of hit, you know, when I did the 10 C for Rod and the 32 Paths of Wisdom yesterday, we were kind of just had the skeleton. Now we're putting meat and, and you know, meat on those bones tonight. Now, let's take a look at, well, before I move on, Paul also talks about four levels of demons. Four levels of demons. Spiritual wickedness in high places, the rules of darkness in this present world, principalities, and authorities. Four levels. Okay. What scripture talks about the four levels? Give me a moment to look that up. Ephesians six twelve is it? Yeah, Ephesians six twelve says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principal? How? Did, what's? Let me read it. 
Okay, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. Four levels of demons. How many worlds do we have? Four. These four levels of demons attack us in each of the four worlds. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Here, the world of Asilut and Embria, before the, before the throne of the king. Okay? Rulers of darkness. Okay? Let's see here. Rulers of darkness of this world. The first two, no, that's easy. Rulers of darkness of this world. Malhut. The demons. Rulers of darkness of Malhut. That's where the first level of demonic attack comes. Rulers of darkness of this world, which is Malhut. Spiritual wickedness in high places before the throne. Absolute Ambria. Then we have, um, well, as, absolute, accurate, you know, the rules of darkness in high places correspond to the world of absolute. Then we have, next would be principalities and powers. Now, Those, that one is up for, for debate. I believe principalities correspond to the world of Bria. And powers to the world of Yitzhirah. Or it could be vice versa. It's kind of a matter of... choice there. Okay? Now, the Bible says in Job, remember Job was attacked with oppression. Oppression. Then, in Genesis 3, chapter 1, verses 6, the Bible talks, let's, let's read that. The Bible talks about lies and deception. Let's look at Genesis chapter 1, excuse me, Genesis chapter 3. Well, I'm all, I'm all over the place tonight, but I'm still, I'm still teaching real good. I'm the nutty professor tonight. Amen? But I'm getting it right. It says, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, eat of it neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So lies and deceptions... are the opposite of tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecy, right? Is that, you know, a prophecy from, a lie and a deception is the complete opposite of a prophecy from God. So, lies and deceptions are the attack 
wage in the world of formation. If he can get you to say the wrong thing and think the wrong thing, you'll form the wrong thing up here and bring the wrong thing into your life. That's why I was saying to you earlier that words are very important in the world of formation. Very, very important. Okay? Now, in the world of Bria, temptation and pride. David was a king and he was tempted sexually and he had a lot of pride. He wasn't going to admit until he was caught. Temptation and pride. And we know in Zechariah 3.1, accusation. The devil, you know, accuses us day and night before the throne in the world of absolute. So we have four levels of demons. We have four attacks that happen in the four worlds. That's why we need the armor, the full armor throughout all the worlds. Okay? Need the full armor. Now, let's go to Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5. There are seven spirits that burn brightly before the throne. Amen? Here's the throne. Keter, Hakman, Bina. Seven spirits that burn brightly before the throne. These seven spirits go through the entire earth. Zern and Pen penetrates into Malhut. Seven spirits burning brightly before the throne. Heset, well, Guvara, you know, Heset, Guvara, Tiferet, Nisad, Ha, Yisad, Malhut. Each, spirit, each one of these spirits has a name. Riches, power, wisdom, strength, glory, honor, and blessing. Where do those seven spirits match up? Here. Riches. God is rich in mercy. Power, guru, judgment again. It, it's consistent. It's consistent with the fruit of the Spirit, with the fruits of the Spirit, and consistent with the gifts of the Spirit, and everything else that we've talked about. The lion on this side, all you know, everything. The four beasts, all of this is consistent. Riches, rich in mercy, riches, power, guru, okay, wisdom, beauty. When you have the center column is the culmination of the right and the left in harmony. When you have God's mercy and judgment, it becomes beautiful. And it's wisdom. So wisdom here in Tiferet. Strength, Nasak. Remember, this is the battle. Glory, remember... Splendor, glory for Ha. Yasad is honor. Why is Yasad honor? When someone, remember, Yasad is associated with truth. When someone is honorable, what is what are they? They're truthful. They say, All my honor, all my word. So honor God's truth, Emet, here in Yasad. And of course, blessings come into Malhut. This is the only place that needs blessing, is Malhut. We don't need blessings here. This is where blessings are needed. So we have riches, power, wisdom, 
strength, glory, honor, and blessings. Amen? Amen. A lot of meat on that skeleton today, isn't it? I know some of these can be debatable, but they belong there nonetheless. Whatever order, we can debate on the order, I'm sure. But I think you have to agree that they belong somewhere in here. That this is a representation of the seven spirits of God that burn brightly before the throne. This is a representation of the fruit of the spirit. This is a representation of the gifts of the spirit. It is a representation of the four worlds. It is a representation of the four demon activities or demonic activities. The four gospels, the four beasts, the living creatures. It fits perfectly in here. Tell you what else fits here, the five-fold ministry throughout the world as well. The five-fold ministries fits in every world. The apostle, say insof, prophet, Absolute, pastor, be you know, Bria, teacher, formation. What does a teacher do? Forms things. Evangelist in the world. Evangelist goes throughout the world. Evangelist, teacher, preacher, or proclaimer. Holy Spirit proclaims the truth. Prophet, Shilika, apostle, has all of the other four up under him. It also represented the, the division of Israel. The high priests, the king, the Levites, and the people. All of Scripture, you, Adam Kadman, all of Scripture represented. In the structure that you see before you of the Tennessee for all. I'm going to end there. I'm going to sign off. I just want to say, may the blessings of our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach be upon you. Shalom and blessings. Tune in tomorrow night on Shabbat night and throughout the weekend.